Hvala Allahu Đelešanu na uputi na dinu imanu islam, volim Allah Đelešanu da budemo vjernici iskreni, volim Allah Đelešanu da nam kabole naš post, da nam uprosti naša grijeha, da nam se smiluje i da nam spasi u džehnemske vatre. Amin, ja robbel alemin. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the blessings, peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions and all those who follow him until the day of judgment. Amin, ja robbel alemin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our fasting and we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us, to forgive us and to save us from hellfire. Amin. Draga i poštovano braćo i cijene džemate, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ovo je naš treći dio druženjem sa koristi, koristima iz tigfara, činjenja iz tigfara. Spomenuli smo, dakle, traženje. Prvi je bilo traženje oprosta od gospodara, jer je on taj koji prašta. Drugo je bilo, on će nam slati obilnu kišu s neba. Treće je, da će nam više u imetku i djeci. Četvrto, da će nam bašće kroz koje će rijeke teći. Peta stvar je bilo traženje oprosta, da bi nam bilo traženje oprosta kajanja. Kajanje Allahu Đelešanu da bi nam oprostio, a za uzrat on bi nam poslao kišu i dao bi nam snagu uz onu koju već imamo. Dakle, to su bile ti pet stvari koje smo spomenuli u protekla dva puta. Jučer nismo imali druženje jer smo imali gosta iz svog razloga da ne bi pretjerali, jer i u svemu treba imati granice, pa tako i u ovome podučavanju, odnosno pričanju o dini manu islamu. Dear brothers, dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, as you know, this is our third halaka, third uh, part of our uh, uh, daily speech or reminder before Salatul Isha wa Tarawih, benefits of uh, istighfar from the Quran Kareem. And we mentioned uh, five of them, Uh, it was asking, number one, asking uh, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is indeed ever forgiver, the one who forgives. And number two, he was, uh, was uh, he will send, when we make his tikfar, he will send a rain upon us, a lot of rain. Number three, he will give us more in wealth and children after his tikfar. And number four was he will provide for us gardens, in which the rivers will flow. Number four was asking forgiveness of, of your Lord and then repent, make tawbah to him. And in order, he will, he will send the rain again and increase your in strength to your strength. So these are five things that we mentioned uh, in a couple of days ago. Now, The third part is six, seven, and eight, inshallah. Dakle, večeras govorimo o šestoj, sedmome i osmoj koristi činjenje iz tikfara. U šestome dijelu Allah Đelešanu kaže u ajetu u Kur'an i Kerim Wa ene stagfiru, wa ene stagfiru rabbekum thumme tubu ili suratul hud. Dakle, da od gospodara svoga opros tražite u anistagfiru i da tražite istikfar, da činite istikfar svome gospodaru, thumme tubu, a zatim da mu se pokajete. A kad to učinite, onda kaže, a on će vam dati da do smrtnog časa lijepo proživite. Meta, meta, hasana, dakle lijep užitak, lijep život, normalan, fin. 
ila ajalin musamma do određenog časa wa yu'ti kulli kulli fadlin fadle i svakom čestitom daće zasluženu nagradu dakle ovaj ajd govori o blagodatima wa an istaghfiru dakle činjenje istighfara gospodaru zatim kajanje zbog greha koje smo počinili sebi nepravdu nanijeli E onda kad to uradimo, onda će Allah Đelešano dati meta'a, a meta'a je dakle dobar užitak, odnosno dobru, lijepu, blagodat. Ne samo blagodat, da ona je dao mnoge blagodat, ali mi hoćemo lijepe blagodat koje su stvari pune beričeta. Pune beričeta da u njima uživaju, jer kad ima čovjek selameta u onome što ima, beričeta, dakle u tome on uživa. Međutim, ako čovjek ima onako meta'a, Dakle, ima dunjaluk, što bi rekli, otvorile mu se dunjalučke kapije, međutim, nema užitka u tome. Konstantno je u pokretu, leti za ovo, leti za ovo, popuni ovde, popuni ovde, dakle, konstantno je u izgubljenom stanju. Zato se, kaže, spominje ovde i u metijokom meta, dakle, ali će nam precizno nam govori kakav će nam dati meta, kako će nam dati užitak. To je lijep užitak, da u njemu uživa. Dakle, može čovjek imati malo, ali da u tome uživa. Dakle, nije čovjek u snazi, u hrvanju, kad je pun snage, nego kad čovjek se kontroliše u ljutnju, kako kaže poslenik sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, dear brothers, in this, in this ayah, number uh, six, uh, uh, benefit of istighfar, when istighfiru rabbekum, that you seek forgiveness of your Lord, Thumme tubu ili, and then repent to him. So then the reward comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he will let you enjoy a good provisions for a specific term. Ila ajalin musamma, until the ajal comes. Until specific time and term, and give every door of favor his favor. Wa yu'ti kullithi kullithi fadlin fadle. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَأَنْ إِسْتَغْفِرُوا And to seek forgiveness of your Lord, ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ And then repent. When you ask Allah to forgive you, then you make tawbah, then you make, istigh, uh, then you make uh, uh, repentance. When we do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُمَتِّعُكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا Then he will give you to enjoy in your life. In your provision, he will give us good provisions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentioned good provisions because there is so many of the people who has uh, good provisions. And they are not enjoying in them. They are running here and there, left and right, trying to fulfill everywhere where is the, somebody is missing in that place. He must fulfill it. Take care of, of, of this and that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, even if you have a little bit of the provisions, but he will give us to enjoy in them. He will bless us in our health. He will bless us in our, in our wealth. He will bless us in our uh, family, with our children, with our wife, with our husbands. So he will bless us uh, with many blessings that we are enjoying in our life. So these are, these are things very important. Specifically, good provisions. And of course, these provisions will go to the specific time and term, and then he will reward everyone uh, accordingly. So this verse, the Rebbe's promises again, a good provision for a specific term of those who make istighfar. And however, the specific term is important here in this ayah. It shows that life, al haya, the life is not permanent and that the good provisions will also come to the end one day. So everything has its beginning and end. And that naturally makes uh, us fearful. That is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his biggest promise to the people of istighfar, those who are making istighfar. He says he will grant us his good favor, his good favor. What else in life do we want other than to know that we have earned his subhanahu wa ta'ala favor. Every blessing is a curse if his favor is not upon us. If there is no favor from him subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, no matter what we have, 
that is cursed one. And everything can be endured if his favor is answered. So even if we have little bit and Allah puts his favor on that, we will enjoy it much more and we'll be much more happier than those who have and possess a lot. So he asked us, dear brothers, very little, very little. All he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, asks is that we seek his forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing else. Just to acknowledge our mistakes and to say, Allah, I am here. Please forgive me. Dakle, ovo je vrlo bitno da ovaj ajet obećava obskrbu, dobru obskrbu, koja zahtijeva činjenje istigfara. Zato Allah Đelešan ne traži od nas puno, traži sasvim malo, a to je da samo zatražimo istigfar, a on će da usliša ako Bog da. Sljedeća stvar, odnosno sedma, sedma korist istigfara. Kaže Allah Đelešanuhu, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah nije kaznio jer si ti među njima bio. I Allah neće kazniti sve dok neki od njih mole za oprost. In the next, the seventh benefit of istighfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in surah al-anfal, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ So dear brothers, in this ayah, in this ayah, we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the blessing of Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم amongst the first generation was safety for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from punishment because his beloved sallallahu is amongst them. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he leaves that nothing can save us from punishment except istighfar. Making istighfar, a lot of istighfar. That is very important for us. One of the scariest things, dear brothers, in human life is disaster. Something similar to what we have to today, COVID-19. When something horrible happens out of the blue and without us expecting it, we, do not, we did not expect that something like this will happen. When in the month of Ramadan, that we cannot come to the mosque to pray tarawih, you know, voluntary prayers, to pray uh, five times a day in the mosque, to make iftars, we did not expect and we did not prepare for that at all. Even it wasn't in our, in our mind. Nothing. So that is curious thing when something just happens like that. So Islamically, from Islamic view of point, dear brothers, they, uh, they can be both test and punishment. Generally, generally it is punishment. Only for the believers is a test and rahmah. Because they know, the believers who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they know this is the test and they, know, they need to be patient. And they know there is a reward. There is no other reward for the patient except al-jannah, paradise. So for the believers is a rahmah, for others, for others could be punishment. We don't want to uh, experience any of it and istighfar is the promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it is not going to happen. He has our back as long as we seek his forgiveness. So everything happens by his permission subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nothing can harm us except by his permission. That's why we believe that uh, nothing can happen except by qada and qadr by Allah's decree and permission. That is the six articles of faith that we believe in. So no matter what's happening, believer knows that something cannot strike him except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is test generally, for everybody is test. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from it. Dakle, 
Vjala Đelešanu govori da neće kazni dok je poslanik ali se među, među nama, među vjernicima, među prvom generacijom, ali kad on ode, ostaje nam samo da činimo istigfar kako bili spašeni. Da postoje mnoge stvari koje čovjeka mogu da uplaše. Poput nekih prirodnih katastrofa, nešto što, bi se, što se čovjek i ne nada, nešto što se čovjek uopšte i ne nada i nije pripremljen za takvo nešto. Vidite ovaj COVID-19, niko se nije pripremljen, niti ko razmišlja da će se desiti i to kada u mjesecu Ramazanu. U najodabranijem, najbolje mjesecu se desilo to. Allah Đelešanu šanje nam lekciju da moramo se vratiti Allahu Đelešanu. Jedini spas nam je da se vratimo Allahu Đelešanu. Jer pazite, ova pandemija kako je nazivaju je u stvari za sviju kazna, osim za vjednike. Za vjednika je rahmet i milost. Jer vjednik zna da sve što se zbiva i događa je da je s Božjom voljom, s Božjim određenjem. I da ništa ga ne može pogoditi osim s Božjom voljom, s Božjom voljom i s Božjim određenjem. Zato vjednik se nada i sabura, a zna vjednik za da sabura nema druge nagrade osim džene. Zato se moramo nadati i moramo biti strpljivi u ome što se dešava. S vjerske strane možemo kazati da je kazna za sve, ali za vjernika je to dakle milost. To je jedna dakle vrsta ispita, vrsta testa i tako dalje. Niko od nas ne voli da bude kažnjen, da bude kažnjavan. Od strane Allaha Đelešan, Allah Đelešan kažnjava. Ne'udhu billah. Danas Allah Đelešan sačuva njegove kazne. Ali da bi izbjegli tu kaznu, moramo činiti istigfar. Moramo se kajati, moramo tražiti oprosta od Allaha Đelešanu. Prvi narod koji je uništen u historiji čovečanstva od strane Allaha Đelešanu je u stvari nuhov narod. 950 godina je pozivao i nisu prihvatili istinu i Allah je Đelešanu uništio. To je prva Allaha Đelešanu kazna. Zato se moramo, moramo toga bojati. So dear brothers, the first punishment in the human history that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes. No one of us likes to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to be safe, From Allah's punishment, we need to do istighfar. We have to seek forgiveness. We have to repent, ask Allah's forgiveness. The first nation, the first people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed was Noah's people who called him 950 years. And very few of them believed in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very few. And when they rejected the faith, In Allah, in the Prophet Noah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. That is the first nation in human history whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed. We don't want to be like them. We need to learn. Our Prophet, Prophet taught us to make it still far. Number eight and lastly, dear brothers, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُرْ رَبِّ غْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْكَ لَا يَنْبَغِي لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي إنك أنت الوهاب. In سورة الصف Allah سبحانه وتعالى speaks about about سليمان عليه الصلاة والسلام. When he said, look at this, look at this uh, the سنة النبوية, the way of the old prophets and messengers sent by Allah سبحانه وتعالى. How they make how they make dua. They make dua my Lord. وقال قال رب اغفر لي. He said, Oh my God, Oh my Lord. Igfirli, forgive me and grant me a kingdom. Wahabili mulkan. Give me and bless me with kingdom such as will not belong to anyone after me. Anyone. Indeed, you are the bestower. You are giver. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was dua of who? Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam. Look at the, how the prophets, they make istighfar to all of them. All of them. And that's how they taught their people, including Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the last messengers and prophets who taught us how to make istighfar. So this is the sunnah of the, of the Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa sallam. قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْكَ لَا يَنْبَغِ لِيَحَدِ مِنْ بَعْدِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابِ 
O my Lord, forgive me and grant me the kingdom such as will not belong to anyone after me. Indeed, you are the bestower. O sma stvar, draga braćo i sestre, molim Allaha Đerašana da nam oprosti, je ajet iz sure Saf u kome sure Saad u kome Allah Đerašan kaže o Sulejmanu alaih salatu osan i njegovoj dovi. Gospodaru moj, rekao je Sulejman alaih salatu osan, oprosti mi, ihvirli, oprosti mi i daruj mi vlast Daruj mi vlas kako niko osim mene neće imati. Ti si uistinu, ti uistinu bogato daruješ. Dakle, ovo je sunet svih poslanika, dakle, ovo je staza svih poslanika činjenje stigfara. Jer je prvo rekao, gospodor, oprosti mi. Tražim tvoj oprost, tvoj pardon. U Ehebli i onda mi podari vlast ne ove vlast koje danas vidimo. Niko neće nikada imati do sudnjega dana vlast poput Sulejmana alaih salatu wasalama. Do su, dakle, on je tako rekao i traži od gospodara, gospodar mu dao. Dakle, niko nikada neće imati više vlast ovako kako ću ja imati. I Allah mu Đelešanu dao da ima takvu vlast. I neke entel vohav, zaista ti si jedini ti koji to možeš dati. I niko više. To je Allahu Ađelešanu milost prema Sulejmanu a.s. Dakle, ovdje ljepota leži u ovoj dovi. U tome što započinje Sulejman a.s. u dovu sa traženjem istigfara, odnosno sa traženjem oprosta od Allaha Ađelešanu, znajući da niko ne može oprostiti se malo Ađelešanu, a nakon toga traži svoju potrebu. Ljudsku potrebu što mu je na kraju Allah Đelešanu je odovoljio i dao mu je i traja koja traje do sunjega dana. Dakle, niko nikada neće imati više vlast onakvu kako je Sulejman alaih salatu wasana. So, dear brothers, in this beautiful dua, we see how Sulejman alaih salatu wasana started. So, the beauty of this dua, the beauty of this dua is that he, alaih salatu wasana, peace be upon him, starts it by seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not say, give me this, give me that, bless, bless me with this, bless me with that. I need this and I need that. No. He said, Qala Rabbi. First of all, he acknowledged the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the Lord. And then he said, Ighfirli, forgive me. And then he, after that, he makes his request, and that request, dear brothers, was granted and will stand until the day of judgment. So all these uh, kingdoms today in the modern world that people may think that they are enjoying in, the, in their kingdom, no one ever, no one will ever have such kingdom as Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam. Because he said, Mulken la yambagi min ba'di. Give me a kingdom that no one else after me will have it. No. Until the day of judgment. So that is, that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did with him. He blessed him. He granted him this kind of the kingdom. And no one else, those who are coming after Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam, will never even close what he has, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is, this is very important for us to know. So the Prophet Sulaiman, alayhi salatu wasalam, was given a kingdom that no one will ever be given after him. No matter what they are trying to do. And he, alayhi salatu wasalam, started his dua making his tighfar first to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our scholars say that one of the ways of having our dua answered and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by, by making istighfar first and then seeking, seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala other things. So this is important for us to know, dear brothers. Dakle, Sulaiman alayhi salatu wa salam je darovan sa kraljevstvom kakvim niko nije niti će ikada biti poslije njega, alaih salatu wasalam. Dakle, 
kad se moli, kako kažu naši učenjaci, prvo treba se učiniti stigfar, oprosto da lahađe lešanu, a zatim tražiti, tražiti ono, ono što čovjek želi. U jednom ajutu Allah Đelešanu kaže Men amila salihan min zekerin ev unsa wa huwa mu'minun fele nuhjijen nehu hajaten tajibe. Onome ko učini dobro, bio muškarac ili žensko, a vjernik je, mi ćemo dati da proživi lijep, lijep život. Poslanik Ali se latu osalam kaže, s ovim ću završiti, Nećeš ništa potrošiti ili podijeliti u ime Allaha Đelešanu. Nećeš ništa potrošiti ili podijeliti u ime Allaha Đelešanu, a da ne budeš nagrađen, pa čak i ono što potrošiš na svoju hanumu. Pa čak i ono što potrošiš na svoju hanumu. Zato ne škrtarimo i molimo Allaha Đelešanu za oprosta i budimo džometni. Budimo džometni kad je o pitanju dijeljenja na lahvom putu. Budimo srdačni, budimo iskreni. Budimo noji koji žele Allahu oprost. Jer sadaka, sad će ako Bog da početi još malo sadaka tol fitr, tu i trebamo pokazati svoju ljubav, svoju želju za oprostom. Pa molim Allaha Đelan Šao da nam oprosti. Amin. Ja rabbel alimin. There are the last lead, the eye and the hadith that I would like to share with you is Men amila salihan, whoever does good deeds, salihan means something good, min dhekerin ev untha, from male or female, whether he is man or woman, wa huwa mu'min, and he is or she is a believer, fela nuhyiyan nahu hayatan tayyibah. We will bless him or her with good life, hayatan tayyibah. We will bless him with very beautiful life. Peaceful life. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, whatever you spend or you give for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you will be rewarded for it. Even though if you spend on your spouse, even if you spend something on your spouse, Allah will reward you for that. So dear brothers, let us, be, let us be generous. This month, the month of Ramadan, is the month of generosity, the month of Rahmah, the month of Maghfirah, the month of Idq min al-Nar, emancipation, emancipation of, uh, from hellfire. This month is full of the blessings. We need to show, dear brothers, that we are in need of God, God's forgiveness. Inshallah, in the next third of the month of Ramadan is emancipation from hellfire. We need to show our generosity. There is sadaqatul fitr. We need to be generous when we spend for Allah's sake. We need, we need to feel it in our heart. We need to give it out of our heart, from deepest of our heart, not from our pocket. We need to spend from our heart because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us for that. And there is, we are showing our sincerity. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness and help and to make us sincere in all what we do. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu.